You know, really, Elvis was all about the music, and people did not get that. You know, people try to complicate it. The music was so much a part of his life that in sharing his music, you lived it with him. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the untold story of Elvis Presley. Mom, they're gonna put me in jail. The way you sing is God-given, so there can't be nothing wrong with it. For this video, we're looking at the life and career of the king of rock and roll. Are you a big Elvis fan? Let us know in the comments. Life in Mississippi Elvis Aaron Presley was born in Tupelo, Mississippi on January 8, 1935 to parents Vernon and Gladys. Sadly, Jesse Guerin, Elvis's twin brother, who was delivered half an hour before him, was stillborn. The Presleys were a working-class family struggling to survive during the Great Depression. Vernon worked odd jobs until he was convicted of altering a check in 1938. He was sentenced to three years, though he only served eight months. But while he was in prison, the Presleys lost their home, forcing Gladys and her son to move in with relatives. The Presleys attended the First Assembly of God Pentecostal Church, where Elvis became mesmerized by gospel music. And when he was 11 years old, he was gifted his first guitar. The Music of Memphis In November 1948, 13-year-old Elvis and his family relocated to Memphis, Tennessee, a big change from life in small-town Mississippi. He loved the bright lights. He loved the music in the city. He loved hearing people on the street. He loved listening to music coming from the bars. And he'd study them. The family moved to the Lauderdale Courts public housing complex. By the time he was in high school, Elvis frequented the Beale Street blues scene and all-night gospel performances. And Elvis would hang at the Flamingo Room. When you realize that Elvis knew where Beale Street was and knew what that all meant, you could sense that he was different. Elvis graduated from Humes High in Memphis in 1953 and worked as a truck driver for some time. He made his first recording at the age of 18 in the summer of that year. He bought some recording time at Sun Records to make a special two-sided acetate disc for his mother, recording the songs My Happiness and That's When Your Heartaches Begin. This was how he was discovered by Sun Records founder Sam Phillips. Bill sets his coat down, picks up the guitar, and starts just, just frailing the fire out of it. I mean, you're beating the rhythm thing. Well, Bill picked his bass, started slapping, playing along with it, just, just all rhythm. The guitar was leaning up on the amp, and I picked it up and started just kind of vamping along with him. In July 1954, Phillips had local musicians Winfield Scotty Moore and Bill Black audition Elvis and record a few songs together. The session wasn't going so well until Elvis started playing Arthur Crudup's 1946 blues song, That's All Right. Days later, the song played on the radio and was an instant hit. It shocked me because here is a classic blues number. And here is a white cat not imitating or mimicking or anything, but just putting his feel into it. Presley Black and Moore's first live performance was at the Bon Air Club on July 17th, but it was their show at the Overton Park Shell later that month that proved Elvis was a star. He debuted his rubber legs moves that would become his signature dance style, causing women to literally scream in the audience. Damn girls won't see you wiggle. Move, man. Not long after, the trio started performing and recording regularly together, managed by promoter Bob Neal. After a lackluster response to his first and only performance at Nashville's Grand Ole Opry in October, Elvis performed on Louisiana Hayride and became a regular there on Saturday nights. He's a young singer from Memphis, Tennessee. Give him a warm hayride welcome to a Mr. Elvis Presley. He was able to trade in his old guitar for a much more expensive one worthy of his musical talents. Commercial success and controversy. In 1955, Elvis was discovered by music promoter Colonel Tom Parker, who became the singer's special advisor and landed him a record deal with a bigger label, RCA Victor. Colonel knew how to do it. Had the contacts with the, the show in New York, the Tommy Dorsey show. 
RCA didn't seem to be able to secure TV performances, and eventually Colonel Parker secures Elvis four shows to coincide with the release of the record in January. Elvis's first million-seller, Heartbreak Hotel, debuted on January 27, 1956. And the next day, he made his national television debut on stage show. In March, Parker officially became Elvis's manager and quickly took control of everything, making sure he earned a big paycheck with every deal. In the Colonel's view, whatever the songs were, whoever played on it didn't matter. It was Elvis. It was, in his mind, about the merchandise. He always called it the merchandise. And that's what it was to him and to RCA. Later that month, Elvis's first studio album was released, and the singer went on to appear on The Milton Berle Show. He also did a two-week Vegas residency, although the older conservative audiences there were decidedly unimpressed. Also understand that in the 50s, when Elvis started singing black music, which young kids could hear on the radio but not buy, suddenly it became a political issue. Suddenly he was jumping, the music was jumping the race line. But Elvis wasn't only into music. He also wanted to be a movie star. Parker secured him a seven-picture deal with Paramount, and clearly they made the right decision because his first film, 1956's Love Me Tender, was a hit. Love me tender, love me long. Before it was released in November, Elvis had already appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show, which arguably cemented his status as a celebrity. You ain't nothing but Elvis Presley's style put him at the center of controversy with the older crowd, including politicians, producers, and even other artists. His sound was his own version of the black gospel music and rhythm and blues that he loved growing up. But for white audiences, it was something new and different. Elvis and Elvis's music pointed to black culture and said, this is something that's filled with the force of life. If you want to be a complete and fulfilled person, if you want to be an American, this is something you need to pay attention to. Elvis's provocative moves and gyrating hips sent fans into a frenzy. He was told to tame his act and was filmed from the waist up during his third Ed Sullivan appearance on January 6, 1957. <laughs> Military, Movies, and Marriage Elvis received his draft notice in December 1957, but was able to defer until he wrapped filming on King Creole. If you're looking for trouble, just look right in my face. He was officially drafted into the U.S. Army on March 20, 1958, much to fans' dismay. But RCA made sure to plan for this hiatus and released pre-recorded music while Elvis was overseas. That August, his mother Gladys passed away at the age of 46. And after threatening to go AWOL, her son was granted time to be with his mother for her last days and funeral. After serving two years, Elvis was honorably discharged and returned home on March 2, 1960. He jumped right back into the studio to record, and in April, he released his fourth album, Elvis Is Back. However, the star continued churning out movies too, releasing both the film and soundtrack for G.I. Blues in 1960. In fact, he dedicated much of the decade to movies starring in roughly three productions a year, while also recording soundtracks for many of them. Blue Hawaii, Girls, 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 and Viva Las Vegas are three of the most well-known in his filmography. Viva, Viva Las Vegas. While stationed in Germany, the 24-year-old soldier met a then 14-year-old Priscilla Beaulieu, the two married on May 1, 1967 in Las Vegas when Priscilla was 21, though she had moved in with the star several years earlier. Never met anyone like you. I hope not. The couple had daughter Lisa Marie nine months later, on February 1, 1968. The comeback and downfall. After years in Hollywood, Elvis wanted to get back to his music. He did the 68 comeback special and revived his music career, reminding audiences that the king still had it. In 1969, 
In 1969, he began performing consistently sold-out shows in Las Vegas. But Elvis's growing substance use disorder marked the beginning of the end. To me, no matter how frustrating the lapses in his career have been, he remains an artist. Problems in Elvis and Priscilla's marriage led to infidelity, allegedly on both sides. And after separating in February 1972, their divorce was finalized in October 1973. The performer's health was in decline, and he appeared heavily under the influence on several occasions. In 1973, he overdosed twice, with one time resulting in a coma. But Elvis didn't want to slow down, and instead continued to perform while suffering from a myriad of health issues, including hypertension and glaucoma. I think he's, he's feeling very hurt, he's very down, he's very alone. He doesn't understand what's happened to music. Uh, he got left out of that. He had become a thing. He was no longer Elvis Presley. He was Elvis. After a few more years of grueling tour schedules and concert specials, Elvis performed what would be his last concert. On June 26, 1977, the King played in Indiana and closed out the night with Can't Help Falling in Love. But I I can't help falling in love. Tragic Death On August 16, 1977, Elvis Presley was found unresponsive by his then-girlfriend, Ginger Alden. Though people continued to speculate and theorize, his cause of death was determined to be heart failure, most likely related to his substance use issues and poor health. A funeral was held two days later at his home, Graceland where he was buried next to his mother and grandmother on the property. He was just 42 years old. If he were here today looking outside and seeing all the people that still loved him, missed him, he would, I don't know, he wouldn't believe it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Legacy and Cultural Impact Elvis Presley is one of, if not the most influential and recognizable artists of all time. Sophie Turner and Joe Jonas tied the knot with an Elvis impersonator. And so did Stranger Things actor David Harbour and Lily Allen. His records, live performances, television appearances, and movies made him a staple in pop culture. And with countless covers, remixes, and tributes, the King's legacy lives on. Unfortunately, Elvis has also become a punchline, particularly because of how his appearance changed in his later years as his health suffered. When someone becomes wallpaper, I mean, there's a great fan base who I love and respect for Elvis, but there's a lot of people who think he's a Halloween costume. Elvis's only child, Lisa Marie, also got into the entertainment business as a singer-songwriter. Lisa's late son, Benjamin Keough, was musically gifted as well, and his sister, actress and filmmaker Riley Keough, has a successful career of her own. The first movie I ever watched in the theater where I went, I want to make movies, was Moulin Rouge when I was 12. Wow. You know, and so that was a really, um, it was a real honor to know that he was interested in making this film. Elvis has been the subject of numerous documentaries, shows, and films. Baz Luhrmann's musical biopic Elvis premiered at the 2022 Cannes Film Festival, receiving a 12-minute standing ovation. The film follows the rising star from his youth into older adulthood, with actor Austin Butler in the titular role. Lerman focuses on the relationship between Presley and his controlling manager, Colonel Tom Parker, played by Tom Hanks. In that moment, Elvis the man was sacrificed, and Elvis the god was born. I will show you what the real Elvis is like tonight! No matter the medium, Elvis Presley continues to be a celebrated music icon with a dedicated and still growing fan base spanning all ages. But that's the thing about Elvis is he's sort of become the wallpaper of society and he's such a superhuman figure. Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.